Welcome back to The Graham Stephan Show. So during a time where the average American could barely afford a $500 emergency, we have videos like this that unfortunately just make you want to eat the rich. It's not a good look at all. And it's this video here. It's titled, Meet the Wealthy Elite Who Are Too Posh to Parent Their Own Kids. And if you thought I was joking, that this video is probably the worst thing I've ever seen on YouTube, Oh boy, just keep watching, because it gets bad. Like, uh, let's start here. With just one in 10 mums staying at home to raise their kids, more of us than ever hire professionals to help with our families. If you want the best, be prepared to pay for it. I would expect to be charging two and a half thousand pounds. Family would be spending a million per child. Here's the thing though, I just want to preface it by saying that it's all relative. Like, uh, for some of these people spending a million dollars on their kid, it could be like the average person spending a hundred dollars, except with a few extra zeros on it. So it really just depends. Money for a lot of these people flows like water. There's an endless supply of it. As much as they want, it exists. And everything else, relative to how much they have, is going to seem cheap. So of course they're going to outsource just about everything they can. But Watch this. Driver Mo works for 34-year-old fashion designer Nina Naustall, who lives in a £7 million townhouse in London's Chelsea. With three children, Nina spends £200,000 a year on parental outsourcing. Yeah, just imagine when they go to college, though, or boarding school. That $200,000 is going to turn into $500,000. But again, it's relative. If these people have $100 million, What's 200,000 pounds a year? It's nothing. That's a rounding error when they're doing their taxes. But my bigger concern is what is the implication on these kids? Them experiencing life with $200,000 of excess disposal at their discretion. What is that going to do to their perception of what's normal? How they're going to integrate with society? How they're actually going to produce something of value? How is that going to affect their lives? And I have a feeling it's uh, probably not going to be positive. I wonder if you could help me. I'm calling on behalf of Nina Nastor. Our personal assistant's name is Faye. And uh, she arranges play dates if anybody's coming to our house. There's birthdays. Oh. She reminds me of the kid from Willy Wonka's Chocolate. Chocolate factory wants the horse, but daddy, I want the horse. No, but give it to me now, daddy. <laughs> However, they do it. This is so terrible. That's an awful impression. But you get what I'm saying. I mean, the, the resemblance between the two. Unfortunate for, for her, but, but you know, hey, her mom's spending a ton of money. <laughs> Uh, I shouldn't be laughing, but you know what? They, they do they do seem alike, okay? Is it possible to make an appointment for a full body groom, please? We have seven chihuahuas. Simba, Princess, Sharky, Diamond, Snow White, Goldie, and Cinderella. Oh, the names. Who's who's in charge of naming these dogs? What? That, that, that makes sense, okay? She's hiring out an assistant to get the dogs washed. But seven? Seven of the dogs? Why does she need seven dogs? There's no way that, that one person could take care of seven dogs, two kids, run a business. Why? For what? <laughs> She's running a kennel. Mo is our driver. You're going to go to Leah's school now. Leah's school now. is East London. And Bastard. East London people speak not very similar to English. English people speak more posh. The fact that they're recognizing these differences at uh, what looks to be between four and five years old Astonishing. That's not good. The, the, they already recognize a difference between these people and these people up here, and we're the ones up here. That automatically makes me think that uh, it sets the precedent that her and her family are above everyone else who doesn't have the dialect uh, that they have. And that's not good. I think that's very unhealthy. Nanny and Butler is an international agency that specializes in placing staff in the homes of the rich, from super nannies with PhDs to bodyguards. Talk me through about, you know, some of the things that you'd really like this, this nanny to be able to do. What would you like them to do? Do you want them to know aerospace? Do you want them to be an astronaut? Do you want them to be a Nobel Peace Prize winner? What would you like? I mean, chances are, with the right budget, they could find whatever they're looking for. There's someone on the planet who, for $20 million a year, they're your guy, no matter what. Now I need your help yeah. <laughs> to find the best nanny as well. A client can be very demanding. The nanny and the, the maid has to be so ugly that my love doesn't even have to get distracted once. Oh no, I mean just the fact <laughs> that that's a consideration. I don't know. To me, that's a, it's a, probably a bit paranoid, but they know their husbands better than I, than I would. I don't know, I'm just saying as an observer. But uh, 
You know, just the fact that you could be disqualified based on your appearance. Just imagine, imagine someone who's like beautiful, both inside and out, they're well educated, they love your kids, but you know what? They're just a little bit too attractive, just cuts them off, they want someone else. I'm just saying, you know what, it probably goes both ways. Never use too much makeup, never wear glamorous things, don't highlight, you know, your beauty, because you, you will risk to lose a job. I think Francesca would prefer someone maybe in her 40s or 50s. Let me know what you guys think, though. I'm sure there's a debate in the comments section whether or not you'd hire her or not. Uh, I'm sure it's going to vary between male and female. Amanda Jenner bought her house with the profit from her new business. Families use me for potty training their children, um, more the wealthy families. Wee Wee doesn't go in the trousers, does it? Where does the Wee Wee go? Potty. In the potty, good boy. <laughs> that seems pretty cute. I don't know about that. Th that's adorable. Where does the poopy go? In the potty, yay! Just get all excited for that. It would take most children about three days. I'd normally charge about £2,000 for that. Amanda is getting ready for tonight's launch of her Potty Training Academy. Why would somebody hire you to potty train their child? Because they can. And the thing that makes sense, though, is like if the parents could get a faster result and pay for it, why not? Okay, if normally it would take the kids a few weeks to learn how to use the bathroom, but she could do it in a day, and they have the extra money, teach them in a day. I don't get it. Why should the child suffer on their education and, and take longer to learn something when this lady's an expert? She could teach the kids in a day or two. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining me on the launch of my Potty Training Academy. There's a big problem worldwide with potty training, and especially in the UK. Not a kid in sight. What does that tell you? There's not one kid in that audience. It's all adults. Maybe, maybe the adults are desiring for it. In her Chelsea home, Nina is hard at work. The former model runs a luxury fashion label. These ones are catalogues from my kids' collection, which obviously my children uh, model for me every season. They seem like normal kids, you know, when you put them in a double-sized closet with boxing gloves. I mean, right? Most kids would just kind of hit each other. With a holiday to Monaco booked, Nina needs to sort a couture wardrobe. The children are having a fitting with their personal cobbler. But the kids don't care about this stuff. This seems like the mom is pawning off a lot of this stuff because the mom enjoys it. The mom wish she had this as a kid. I can't imagine. If, if I were four or five years old, I'd hate this stuff. Why? These are people that um, are short on time but have a lot of money to spend. I think they're sport with lots of love and attention, these children, but they're, their amazing reality is a wonderful cocooned world of opulence. It's about being spoilt with really gorgeous things. The kid's picking her nose. I mean, what difference is this going to make whether she's shopping at Walmart or this place for like 20 grand? To me, this just seems like a waste of money. Waste of money, waste of resources. This could be used towards anything else other than this. At home, there's one duty Nina doesn't delegate, choosing the Chihuahua's couture for their afternoon walk. This is the dog's wardrobe. Diamond is wearing one of the Gucci fur jackets. Yeah, okay, put fur on a dog? What? Am I hearing that correctly? Why would you do The dog has fur. Why put fur on fur? <laughs> so silly. That's why the dog is fur to begin with, so it doesn't have to wear that ridiculous outfit. It's a bit more difficult than most families because we have very specific dietary requirements. I'm vegan, my husband and my children are vegetarian. We basically say to the nanny, there's no sweets, no chocolate, no cakes. My worst nightmare would be a nanny that comes in and wants to cook kind of ready-made nuggets and chips, fast food. Uh, when these kids go off to college, they're going haywire. They are just binging all the cake and the chocolates and the sweets. I feel like depriving them of so many things, it can't be healthy. Restricting their diet so much. Okay, I get it, like, like be healthy. But some of my best memories, going to McDonald's, getting a Happy Meal with Chicken McNuggets, those foam pressed, just artificial things. Just dipping them in barbecue sauce. I love that. I don't do that anymore, but as a kid, there's nothing better than getting a Happy Meal with a little toy, a little hamburger. I loved it. Lucy has been given 24 hours notice to find a nanny that can cook vegan food, ski, and has a spiritual outlook. What? What does having a spiritual outlook and skiing have to do with cooking a good meal? I, I don't understand that. It's like all these ancillary things that had nothing to do with one another. Why? Hello. Hi, Maria. I can see you've got a lot of experience. Cooker, housekeeper, 
A lot of experience. Yeah, she probably says that because she, she's older. Yeah, I see you have a lot of experience there. And she's like, yep, I got 70 years of experience. But can you ski? She's like, nope, not since my hip went out. She's like, nope, next. Millionaires Iren hires staff to help her raise her five children. I'll have two butlers. I have somebody who turned down all my beds. We have a driver. We have a tutor. We have a nanny. It's always good to have staff when you're super busy like me. What could she be busy doing other than hiring other people to do things for her? At which point she could just hire that out, get a manager. You know you're rich when there's like straight up a bathroom sign, there's like an exit sign in, in your house to show people where to go to the bathroom so they don't get lost, because it's so big. I've realized the more help we get, my husband is free to do other things. I can't look after my house on my own. 47 bedroom, I mean, who does it? 47 bedrooms, you don't need that. Why? No wonder they need so many people just to dust the rooms that go unused for probably years on end. Irene has employed Nanny Connie for over eight years to help raise her five children. When I go to my two days off, I miss them so much. Connie, my nanny, is really, really nice. She usually gives us hugs. I usually miss her when she goes out for the day. She seems like the real mom, okay? The nanny. The nanny seems like the one these kids really care about, they have a heart for. Just hearing them speak about how much they love the nanny, well, yeah, because they raised the kid. I leave my, my eldest daughter six years old and a five years old, and then my youngest one is three because I, I leave them to my parents. They look after my kids because I went to work outside the country. That's tough. Imagine giving up your own family because you can't support them, you can't make enough money, so you raise someone else's kids to forego raising your own kids to, to support them. That's gotta be a mind trip for the kids too. I don't blame her for being in that position at all. If you don't have the means to take care of your kids, you, you wanna support them in any way you can. I'm glad her parents are able to take over, but it's just, it, that's difficult. Very difficult to, for me to comprehend. Um, it's just, it's sad. But you know what? It seems like she's a very kind-hearted person. I don't blame her at all. I'd probably be doing the same thing. At Nanny and Butler, we have many different kind of clients, ranging from royals, captain of industry, celebrities. No one wants to let other people know how wealthy they are. Many times there are celebrities, public figures, so we have to be careful. Yeah, then don't dress them in designer clothing like they're about to do a runway model shoot. That's one of the best ways not to have your kids be a target, is just don't dress them up in, in really expensive clothing. Done. This one in front, this one on your chin now. Yeah? No, don't touch it, just like near your chin. Yeah? Your legs no teaches forward. us boxing, but not to kill people. Oh, where's the fun in that? <laughs> boxing, but not to hurt anybody. <laughs> just, just for fun. No, like, listen, if, you're, if, if it's a life and death situation, you gotta do what you gotta do, unfortunately. Obviously, if it's non-lethal, that's probably for the best. But sometimes, it's like, I feel like you might have to go the distance if you absolutely need to. Hopefully, you're never in that position to begin with. Hopefully. I went to an amateur like boxing that. club in East London. It's like a play. The kids are playing well. It's the weakest boxing ever. I hope this is not the lesson just done in the dining room. Mason Haynes is a high-risk security operative who specializes in protection for families. When we've got female operatives looking after the children of the great and the good, then we refer to them as ninja nannies. It's crazy everyone's just mopping around in a, in a Range Rover, Bentleys, Mercedes, like all these great cars. And they're not even the families. They're the ones servicing the families. And it's, it's really important to have um, a good bond with um, the mother and the child um, so that you feel like you've got 110% trust in me when I'm out with your child. It's, it makes me much more comfortable. Part of me wonders too, who are these families who agree to be filmed in a documentary like this? Like, I bet most of these families very under the radar. They don't want anyone to know what's going on in their business. They're very private. So opening up the cameras in something like this makes me wonder about them to begin with. Today we're doing a portrait of me and the children. Getting any kind of time together to organize a painting is, uh, is, is very tight. I thought those were his drawings for a second. Now I'm realizing that's the kids' drawings, but imagine if those were his portraits. Charges like a hundred grand for them. Before artist Metin starts the family portrait, there is an unveiling of his last masterpiece. When I unveiled it, there was a bit of a deathly silence in the room for about, what well, to me seemed an hour. It seems so vain just to get a portrait of yourself on the wall. 
Like it, it's it's just someone spent time painting you, and you put that up on the wall. Like not you with your family on vacation. You with you know you with grandparents on the no, just just you, <laughs> just you looking good. You kind of reminded me of uh, the Grace Kellys of, of that era and the romanticism of of what it is to be a woman, a mother. When you walked into your room wearing that dress, I thought, I'm so blessed to be next to you. Oh, this guy's such a yes man. He's telling her exactly what she wants to hear so that he comes back, she pays him some more. That's all that is. Nina's children are helping out with the family fashion brand by modeling the latest season. It's one thing, okay, doing this without permission. It's another thing, doing that. There's a I house know. behind it, right? I know. Okay? I didn't well, realize. You didn't realize. She made no attempt to investigate. What? Finally, someone's telling her off. This lady's been getting on my nerves, just the entitlement, the arrogance. So finally someone's standing up to her, this is nice. Let's clean it up. Anything else, I'll do it. But I'm not doing that. This was not shit. And what do they think doing this out front of the guy's house, why? You know, this this seems just very entitled to me. Living in their 45 million pound family home in London's Kensington, Russian investment banker Igor lives with wife Natasha and daughter Katya. Katya has been playing the violin since she was just five years old. See, this to me is not too posh to parent. When it comes to music like this, you, you need that expertise to be able to pass down. The parent would never be able to teach their kid how to play violin like that. This is one of the things that I actually agree on outsourcing. What was that? Wait, hold up. Once, what piece of art is two skeletons like that? What on earth is that? And looks like to the left of that, two parents with like a kid with Mickey Mouse ears. This is the most disturbing piece of art I have ever seen in my life, and I hope they got that from Spirit Halloween because it's not worth more than like a hundred bucks. The family have employed Nanny Emma for the past thirteen years. Well, she's crucially important for us. My mom was she well not as much now, but she used to travel loads for work. So she was like a second parent, because she's very easy to talk to. They do have good taste in art though, besides the skeleton. I do like his, uh, his taste. Good decorations. When you have stuff for a long time, they become like a part of the family. Stuff has been with me for so many years, and uh, I spend every single day with them, from I get up in the morning till I go to sleep. Are you ready? One, two, three. three. Great painting, okay? I don't think anyone doubting how well they treat people around them. It seems as though they treat everybody very fairly. They're very well compensated. The only issue that I see is what's life like for the kids? Are they getting a true understanding of the world? Are they getting a bubble that they won't know how to adjust to when they hit the real world? Are they always going to be taken care of for the rest of their life? Like, all of these things need to be considered. And I think when, when you're giving them just one experience in a very structured environment, it doesn't give them much room to figure out who they are as people. So with that said, you guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, feel free to add me on Snapchat and Instagram, and don't forget that you can get some free stocks with all the way up to a few thousand dollars with a paid affiliate link down below in the description. When you make any deposit, the link and information is down below. Enjoy, let me know which free stocks you get. Thank you so much, and until next time.